The repeated sound of a hoof slamming against metal echoed throughout the empty void. Twilight's hoof fell sharply against the metal barricaded door of the farmhouse. She was desperately begging for it to open up. She didn't care if some horrific abomination in the distance heard. All she wanted to know was that Applejack was okay and that she made it safely to the barn before the world had shifted around her. Somewhere in her mind, she already knew that trying to find Applejack where Pierre could be futile, and yet here she was, slamming her hoof against the middle door, praying for some kind of response inside. With that final strike with her hoof, the metallic door gave away. The empty air echoed loudly with a groaning creak, followed by a hollowed crash of steel hitting steel. Twilight panted as she turned to look at her work. The farmhouse was now open for her to investigate. Her hooves, frothed with pain, was now mostly bruised from just how hard she'd been striking the middle door. A part of her didn't care how damaged her body became anymore. It didn't really matter in this strange world anyway. The other half of her mind, a part of her still desperately clinged to that logic and hope. She shouldn't have hurt herself too much. With a deep breath, she slowly turned and slowly walked into the darkened farmhouse. No light sipped through the cover windows or from the door. Just desolate remains of the house that once belonged to the Apple family. Twilight tapped on her pendant around her neck, and it once more lit up with light, revealing just how much damage had actually been done to the house. No longer were the halls and the walls made of wood and wallpaper, but delicately hanging pictures of beloved uh, Apple family and friends. The house was no longer filled with simple wooden furnishings that lined the hallways and room and gave it a warm lived feeling. No realistic charm, no simple decorations, absolutely nothing left that belonged to the Apple family that once lived there. There was nothing but cold, harsh, rusted metallic walls lining the hallway. Thick sheets of steel lined the floor, layers with ash, rust, and what looked like splatters of blood. The house was all now deadly silent, only remains of ponies having to be lived there moments ago, long gone. Her hooves echoed dully against the thick slab of metal beneath her as she headed for the living room. The comfortable furnishings and the house were also gone as well, now replaced with either absolutely destroyed remains of tables and chairs or horrifically designed structures meant to cause great harm to a pony. Grim chains hung from the ceiling, blood splattered in various places on the floor, and the walls were lined with sharp objects. Applejack's living room had just turned into a torture chamber. The only thing that eased Twilight's mind was the simple fact that no pony actually appeared within any of the devices. They were empty and unused. Her dim light swept across the room, looking for even a partial trace of the ponies who might have been there before that horrific siren had blared. But all she found was ash and blood. Leaving the awful room behind, she headed for the dining room next, hoping that she, what she would find wouldn't turn her stomach any more than it already did in this world. The dining room was completely empty and silent as the rest of the house, but it was free of horrific imagery that stained the rest of the world. The table spanned the length that only had empty plates scattered across it, signs of metal having been prepared but have long since forgotten. Why doesn't it make any sense? Twilight let out a growling frustration cry. She raised her hoof up and swung at a long since grayish dish on the table, sending it flying straight for the wall. It crashed finally into the wall, splitting into several tiny pieces that scattered across the ground. Why? Why do you keep separating me from my friends? Why do you keep showing me these horrific scenes followed by these calming scenes? Her, her horn lit up, and the table before it became enveloped with her glow of her magic, before being tossed across the room. Plates went flying as the wooden table splintered and cracked, its crashing of the immense force into the wall. Twilight panted heavily, her body shaking as her mind tried to, to find a single thought to concentrate on. She fell, sitting on the cold steel as her black back hooves ached and throbbed. Her mind ran circles in her head, and the cold air cooled her heated skin. I just... I just don't get it. Twilight closed her eyes, trying hard to think of what was happening. 
Is there something I'm missing? Something that ties everything together? The monsters, the scenery, this whole world itself? Am I just missing something? She hated herself for not knowing the answer, but she hated the world even more than for giving it. She had lost count of how many times she had been nearly killed to this day. How many times she had just gotten hurt, lost, or how many times she thought she was reaching for the end of this sanity, only for her to be dragged deeper into it. Someone, anyone, please, I just need a clue. Twilight's tail curled around her legs as she sat there, trying to shut just to keep everything in the back of her tears once more. Every time she had just given in to believing, and into hoping that things would be better, they were just quickly as tossed away. She had lost count of how many times the world had made her break down, to question everything what she was doing. Anger still boiled down inside of her gut, pushing at the depression that was trying to take her over. The memory of what Magus had shown her in the barn surfaced to her once more, and she felt a new wave of anger reach her. Her resolve was settling back in, and was just a small reminder that she couldn't give up now. She had to continue. The sound of something striking the metal floor made Twilight nearly jump out of her skin. She was instantly on her hooves and looking behind her, expecting yet another one of his world's abominations to emerge from the shadows. But the air was silent as ever. Only the shadows were looking back at her. Twilight then stood there, frozen, unsure if this distraction was, was or something coming to attack. Her medallion was silent, so whatever the sound had been might have been like it was her enemy. Her eyes shifted to the floor, noticing that there was something new behind her and that hadn't been there a moment ago. A small golden key placed on top of the folded paper. Twilight examined the key, not noticing anything important before opening the piece of paper. I know the things are hard right now, but I believe in you. You have only a little further to go and you'll save every pony. I found this key. Follow this map to the door and it mostly unlocks. Don't wait too long. This world doesn't like waiting for you long, your friend. Pinky? Twilight mouthed out loud at the end of the note. Right before the note was crudely drawn lay out of the town, with the ongoing through the leading circle X. Pinky left me this note? Twilight pushed through her thoughts of what the note had just said for a moment, then looked down at the hallway where the broken back door still lay in pieces. She quickly ran outside and looked around. However, the darkness that covered the town only now gave her a limited view. If Pinky was somewhere out in the dark, there'd be no guarantee of going after her. What does that mean? Why did she give me this and not even stop to say hi? Twilight asked out loud, the more airing the questions than seeking an answer. She hovered the paper in front of her once more, reading it to herself once more. This world doesn't like waiting for too long. Those words were obnoxious to her. They said a lot so little. Somehow Pinky knew the laws of the world, something that had managed to indulge her all this time. Everything made no sense, but yet Pinky had somewhat sense to it. Somehow the idea didn't seem ludicrous. What baffled her the most was perhaps maybe scared the most, was that Pinkie Pie had found a way to save every pony here? Perhaps even brought bring an end to the horrid world? If such a place existed in this world, then why hadn't Pinkie saved every pony? Why hadn't she gone over to help herself and brought every pony to safety? Was that because she needed magic in order to save every pony? Was that something Twilight could do? Twilight hadn't focused on it too much. But the thought of the idea that every pony else was trapped in there was going horrific mazes and monsters that she had crossed her mind. Which, if that was the case, then she wasn't very special at all. There were plenty of unicorns in the town that could provide magic. There were plenty of ponies who had the strength for knowledge to fight and save every pony. If they all fought together, then live in this world will seem small in comparison as a veritable army. It was an idea that quickly dashed away as it came, just from realization that every pony she had met today had been alone, separated from the others, and traveling through this horrific world in on her own. Despite how many ponies were in Ponyville, every single one of them was alone right now, and any time she had met any pony, in a matter of minutes, she's been separated from them. 
that seemed to be the only constant in this world. You had to be alone. Perhaps that was why Pinky hadn't said anything. She just came to drop off the key for Twilight and then left as quickly as she came? If that was truly the case, Twilight wished she had at least written a little more on the note. Perhaps an explanation as to why Pinky couldn't save every anyone, or how she managed to find Twilight so easily, or just give a simple I'm okay and just keep going. All she knew was that Pinky somehow had her note written in that usual jumbled mess that Pinky had called writing. She was now gone. Twilight let out a soft sigh, frustrated one, and she looked at the map that Pinky had scribbled onto the note. It took her back to Ponyville. This time it was heading for the center of town. The area circled with an X on it had to be City Hall. That's halfway across town from here, Twilight murmured to herself, remembered the route back to town from Sweet Apple Acres. However, getting across town was bad enough just to try to avoid the soldiers that seemed to surround any pony any time one spotted them in town before the whole transformation. Not to mention that there was a looming possibility that the dragon flying around could come down and start attacking her as well, but then the world's look of match it all the hell it created. There was no way of knowing how safe it would be to get to the center of town. Pinky's note just said, if I go there, I could save every pony. I can only trust that she knows what she's doing, Twilight said, taking a deep breath and going to help reassure herself. She then began to walk away from the abandoned farm that was once Applejack's home and headed for town. The cold steel beneath her hooves let out a dull thud with each step. No matter how far she walked, the ground was at least consistent with rusting metal though that seemed to stretch out into the darkness around her. Her only light that came into part of the pendant glow glowing around her neck, extending her to view a short distance in front of her. She passed by what seemed to be like the apple trees, trees Sweet Apple Acres was famous for, and now that they were twisted poles with metal covers that looked like slowly pulsing skin, it was a stretched, almost unnaturally thought around the tree what appeared to be a bit of muscle underneath that would occasionally break through the skin. At the top of every tree, the jagged metal poles seemed to turn across. Twilight had stopped and stared at the, one of the trees, examined the oddity of it. The way the trees were placed seemed odd, even for an apple orchard. They were ununiformly unfor placed around, in the same distance between each of them. The cross at the top of each tree was similar to the ones that she had seen during the winter withers attached to it. To only these felt a difference, as if though they were placed as a remembrance instead of a warning. A cold shiver ran down Twilight's back, and she turned away from the tree that she was studying. She continued her trek back towards town, trying to push the thought of her back to her mind for now. She needed to focus on getting back to town alive, and, uh, and from there, getting to City Hall alive. Her gut shifted easily, knowing that the new key inside her magic revisor would only lead her to more trouble, and she no longer had any of those, those magical health drinks to help her. The only thing she had for self-defense was the last remaining book in her revisor, and she wasn't about to rely on for bashing away monsters. She stopped and she noticed the path in front of her, suddenly coming to an abrupt end. She blinked as she looked down, and she could easily see a bottomless chasm where the floor had once been. The direction where she had been walking in was the most direct way back into town, but it looked like the ground just gave away half out and on her trip back. The town had been swallowed by the infinite abyss. Was there no way to get back to Ponyville? The note had said that she needed to go into town, but there was no path that that was going to lead her that way. For all she knew, it could very well likely be the piece of the land left, flowing above the sea of nothingness. Furring her brow, she looked to her left and right. Either direction would possibly be the answer, or just lead her to be further more confused used and lost. Something in her gut was telling her that the town was still out there, but the world was going to make it difficult for her to get back there. Letting out an annoyed sigh, she turned around and left. She started walking in that way on a guess. She followed the edge of the bottomless pit, occasionally looking back at it, wondering how far she went. It was a direction from the freshy 
metal trees that surrounded her at the other table. Her mind kept wandering about the bottomless chasm. About things like that, what could have caused or how it could have affected the town, or why it was there in the first place. Beneath the surface that could have been an earth rock, she couldn't even know she didn't see anything the way down below. She stopped for a moment to ease her cautious mind, laying her horn up and gripped a horn a hold of the nearby metal branch. She tugged on it for a moment before the rusty metal snapped away from the flesh tree. Holding it over the empty chasm, she let it drop to the dropped and opened her ear to listen. A moment passed, another moment passed, followed by another, and yet another. No sound whatsoever. Came back letting her know the metallic twig had hit some kind of bottom. It was either too far down and the sound wasn't loud enough to echo back up into the emptiness. If she was back home, then back in the normal world, she would have figured that she wanted to study this phenomenon more. But the only thing she wanted to do now was to get back the world back to normal. Continuing to follow the edge of the chasm, she noted that the medallion hadn't buzzed in quite some time. She wondered if somehow, just maybe, in the transition from the fog world into the other world, that she had entered one that had no monsters in it. The town was far too quiet for its own good. It was a strain starting to grate her mind. There was no wind, there were no bugs, not even the trees that looked like they had pulsing beat through them and didn't make a sound. The only sound she could hear was the clopping of her own hooves against the metal ground. She was alone. She felt desperately alone, like not even a single soul was anywhere nearby. She picked up her pace of her walking. She wanted to find a new path, a path to the town. She wanted the comfort of seeing Ponyville again, even if it was lonely, boarded up remains of Ponyville. She wanted to feel the wind. She wanted to know how the world felt like as if it existed. She was alone. All returned to her was the silence of loneliness of the trees. She had stared at them as she passed them on. They were perfectly aligned trees passing by without each word. Each one marked out with a cross at the top. Each one was just using a pulsing in time. If she turned her gaze away, all she would see was a bottomless empty pit that were obviously nothing she could be. She was alone. Her hooves struck against the metal loudly, but it barely echoed. She was alone. She ran, picked up a run, trying to escape, trying to find something. She was alone. She had to escape. She had to get somewhere. She had to escape. She had to get somewhere. She was alone. Gah! Twilight's car terrified cry rang out as her hoof hit the medical root, root that had sprung out from the rusted metal door floor. Her body hit the ground as she tumbled forward a bit before landing on the hard on her side. She let out a sad, stiff, thick groan, the feeling the huge twinge running up in the side of her body. She groaned as she tried to sit up. Her mind was wondering just how many times she'd been crippled over her pain since she had been there. She took a deep breath, closing her eyes, trying to keep her from racing heart. The soundless of her, the air around her was playing tricks on her mind, and she just needed to keep focused. To get to City Hall, that's all she needed to do. Her eyes opened back up, and she instantly noticed something that she hadn't seen before. Right next to her was a metal bridge that crossed the bottomless ravine that appeared to be a farm between the farm and town. A way across? Twilight asked, speaking into the void. She got up to her hooves and began to examine the bridge. It didn't appear to be held up by anything from the ravine, extending from both the metal door she was already on. It certainly hadn't been up there from when she fell over, but it was clear as day. She looked at it suspiciously before, placing a hoof down on it. The metal gave out a small creak that seemed to hold steady. She then put one hoof over at a time over the bridge, going slowly and carefully across the creaking metal. It wasn't very wide, only wide enough to fit maybe two ponies, and there were no side rails. She took several deep breaths to keep herself calm in maintaining the rhythmic of one, two, three, four of her hooves across the bridge. One wrong step and she could easily plummet to the bliss. And who knows what may happen to her then. Twilight felt the pressure brewing in her throat and swallowed it down, just concentrating on the task at hand. She looked forward and continued her slow trek across the bridge. 
hearing the creaks and groans from bearing her weight as she walked. She only blinked once more as she saw the sight of the end of the bridge. Land that connected the bridge across from Sweet Apple Acres into Ponyville. Reefs, relief slowly washed over her. But as she maintained the slow walk, her hooves had landed on the other side. She let out a gasp, tending tension and leaving her muscles. She was closer to the going to the city hall. Now all she needed to do was to head down. That's what she was kept telling herself, just to focus on getting to the city hall. With her composure regained, she stepped forward again, only for her light to illuminate the pool of blood right before her. Frozen at the other at the sight of the crimson liquid, she quickly looked up to find the source. Another large wooden cross was impaled to the metallic floor of the world, oozing blood from the owner nailed to it. A unicorn with a white coat and fiery red hair. It was once her childhood schoolmate. Moon dancer? Twilight yelped, running forward. No, no, not again. Moon dancer! She cried out, looking towards the nails that had driven through the unicorn's hooves, looking for a spot to grip her with her magic and bring her down. Twilight? A quiet murmur spoke, and Twilight froze. Her head turned up to look at Moon Dancer's face. Seeing the girl's eyes barely open to stay open, but with a gentle smile on her face. Twilight, you've made it. Hold on, Moon Dancer. I'm going to get you down from here. It'll be all right, I promise. Twilight's horn lit up as she grabbed hold of, of spikes, holding Moon Dancers to the cross. She pulled hard, slowly removing them one by one. Moon Dancer didn't seem to flinch at the pain of them being removed. She just let her hooves fall limp as if they were removed before collapsing off into Twilight Tubes. I've got you. I've got you, too, Twilight said, lying Moon Dancer on the ground so she could rest. Twilight ran her hoof across Moon Dancer's face, moving the hair out of her face and wiping away some of the blood that stained it. Twilight, Moon Dancer spoke quietly. I'm glad you made it here. I didn't doubt you would. You always managed to achieve what you were set out for. Moon Dancer coughed violently. Her whole body was shaking. Don't talk. I'll get you medical help. Twilight lifted her head and then looked around, seeing nothing but the rusted metal darkness as far as her eyes could see. I, I, I see somewhere. I know there's help somewhere. You just have to hold on. Twilight? Moon Dancer wheezed. Twilight could only stare at her childhood friend, who was gently smiling back at her, despite how much pain she was in. It's all right. Some ponies die. No, Twilight yelled, feeling the tears forming at the edge of her eyes. No, they don't have to die. Not like this. Twilight's shoulders shook as hot tears began to stream down her cheeks. Not like this. Not, not as a warning for me. You don't have to die like this. Yeah, look at you. Moon Dancer chuckled softly, crying over little old me. <laughs> and here I thought you didn't like me. What? Twilight stared in shock. The unicorn was withering away at her hooves. Why would you think that? I never hated you. You were my friend. Because you were always by yourself, Twilight. Moon Dancer gently shook her head, closing her eyes and keeping them closed. I would invite you to parties, try to spend time with you, try to introduce you to more friends, and all you did was stay in that dorm of yours. You always studied. You never spoke to anyone unless it was a question. He never seemed to have fun. Twilight's mouth hung open for a moment. She then closed it, trying to speak again, but no words came out of it. She gritted her teeth, feeling the tears continue to stream down her face. She shook her head, lowering it closer to Moon Dancers. I don't hate you, though. I just... I just... Twilight sniffled, trying to hold back her sobs. I just thought it was more important. I... I had responsibilities. I had things I had to do. And if I hadn't, I'd disappoint every pony. Twilight looked at Moon Dancer's face, and Moo's Moon Dancer slowly opened her eyes once more. Twilight could see the dulling blue color in her eyes. She was fading fast. I never hated you. At school, you were one of the only ponies I thought of as a friend. No pony else even came closer, but I kept myself alone because I thought I had to. You were never alone, Twilight, Moon Dancer whispered. Twilight stared at Moon Dancer, watching as Moon Dancer smiled a little wider. 
and you never will be alone. Even if you don't see anyone around you right now. Even if it feels like no one cares. One of Moon Dancers who slowly begin to rise, though it shook as though as it looked a great effort. She raised it and gently placed against Twilight's chest. They'll always be here. Your friends. Twilight stared at Moon Dancer's eyes as they closed once more, and a hoof went limp. Her eyes whined as she watched as her friend gave her last breath before finally turning still. No, no, Moon Dancer! Twilight shook her shoulders a little, trying to get her to move. Moon Dancer! Moon Dancer! Her friend was silent as the air around her. Twilight gritted her teeth and closed her eyes, pulling her friends closer to her. Her tears then fell down faster down her cheeks, just letting herself mourn at the loss of her old friend. This vile world had taken away not just her closest friends now, but even ones from her childhood. It wasn't fair. She'd never done anything to deserve any of this. Sure, she was a lonely child, but she found friendship later in life. And all she had done since there was be there and be happy, and trying to be, make one of her friends happy as well. She never hurt anyone. She never committed the severe crime. She did everything that everyone had to ask her to do. So why did this happen to her? Twilight let out a few more quiet sobs before her breathing started to normalize. She remembered the, the note and the key that still lay tucked away inside of her, and she realized that she had a mission to complete. She was still had to go save every pony. She rubbed her eyes and opened her and even rubbed her face, being greeted to a pale orange mane. Twilight's eyes shot open as she just stared down at the mare of her hooves. Her mane was curled pale orange with a paler orange streak going through it and a light green-yellow coat. It was stained with blood the same way Moon Dancer had been. The evidence of her being nailed to the cross was still present. This wasn't Moon Dancer. To Junebug? Twilight murmured, shock still settling in in that mare that had wasn't holding Moon Dancer. Does, does that mean Moon Dancer wasn't real? An illusion? Her mind felt her burden once more. The world was messing with her mind once more, but at the time it felt so different from the others. The world had screwed with her, changing the land, horrific monsters, or just strange visions, but this? This had to felt real. It felt like Moondancer had actually been there with her. Twilight gently picked up Junebug's body onto the floor, taking a step back from it. Though Moondancer had felt it real, it didn't change the fact that now Junebug was there before her. Killed in the same way Winter Wivers had been killed, the same way that Sparkler had been. Twilight remembered Junebug well. She didn't sell flowers, but she maintained them all around town. She made sure the insects weren't ruining them, and made sure they had proper water and soil, placing them in the older ones start to river, and was more than willing to help the ponies as well as the other plants. She was also a mother. Her little girl, Peachy Pie, would be turning nine in the fall. Two of them would often be seen during the weekends, walking around town together, as her mother did her rounds. Then the two of them would settle down for lunch, and Peachy would tell her mom all about school and during the week, and all the plans she had with her friends, and how much she couldn't wait to grow up to be just like her mother. Twilight gritted her teeth, lowering her head as some memories of wonderful mare had her head once more. I'm sorry, Junebug, she whispered slow, sorrowfully. I'm sorry you used to be this way, used to get to me, used to just hurt me. Twilight just stared at the harsh, rustic, metallic ground before her. Her eyes stared at the rotting brown and red color that saturated for the surface. But I'm going, I'm going to save every pony else. I'll save you, your, your little girl. Don't worry. Twilight swallowed a little. Just rest in peace. Though with those words, Twilight turned to face the cross. The wooden statue stared back at her, almost mocking her the words of Merlin she had read from the spring once more. If you broke their laws, invaded their land, offended their nobles, the fate of death was brought upon you. You would be seen by those you knew and loved, and by your enemies, by your goddess, that you were an example of their power. A loud crack on the wooden cross echoed loudly in the darkness, in the emptiness that surrounded her. She figured that there's something significant that would be the loudest in the world, 
Her magic brought the heavy wooden structure crashed down hard onto the metal floor below, the splinter wood scattering from the force break. Twilight then used her magic once more, exerted of a long magic just to break such, such a fixed structure. She needed to be careful of how much she used. In this world, being without magic was good as a death sentence for her. She stepped over the fallen cross and continued ahead. The warning execution didn't get across her mind. She knew she was walking into danger, possibly death itself, but too many ponies had already died. Too many had been made it to suffer in the hands of this world. If Pinky's message really meant that she could save every pony, then she was going to do it. As her mind found its determination, she noticed that the outskirts of the town had finally came into view. She slowed her pace as littles and metallic structures rose from the ground, barbaric reconstructions of what the town looked to be in the normal world. No buildings had signs or billboards or windows or cardboard. No signs of half of life living in them. Just giant buildings made of rusting metal, stained with spots of blood. All of them felt more like cages than houses. Twilight felt a shiver run up her spine. The town just felt so wrong. Ponyville was never meant to look like this. It never meant to be like this. She had to make her way to City Hall and fast. Walking down the street, she wasn't entirely sure which one she was on just yet. Normally she knew every Ponyville was like at the back of her hoof, but it was just in this twisted world that she could be seen anywhere. She tried to remember the way the town had been arranged, and the pattern on the buildings were... She tried to remember, but it felt like her home was so far away from her now. This world had been filled with harsh brown red metals that barely echoed just wasn't her home. The empty streets carried read clunking hooves, noises of her hooves against the metal as she continued on, looking for something recognizable. She turned to the corner of the nearby street, hoping that one would have more signs she could follow. Pinky's map would have worked just fine if she had been able to have straight ahead from the farm into town, but the world had to be difficult for her. Huh? Twilight murmured as a breeze of hot air passed through her coat, which caused Twilight to stop for a moment. There hasn't been a breeze in this world. Her head then turned in the direction that the breeze had come from, trying to help find its source. The light of her pendant fell upon a large black mass of rotting and disconnected flesh that appeared to be slowly rising and falling. Her whole body froze, and her heart seemed to stop as her eyes traced the outline of the creature's body, the jagged edges and of its jaw and neck, the sharp teeth that glowed in the light, the large wings that extended from its back. She felt her body begin she felt her body begin to shake as she started not being able to see its pitch black eyes nor was it just moving yet perhaps the dragon hadn't seen her yet it appeared to be sleeping she stared at it feeling her heart pounding in her chest she could swear the sound of the echoing through the world around her her mind was telling her that she had to run she had to get to city hall but her body wasn't moving she already know how terrifying this creature could be. She didn't need a reminder. Suddenly the dragon shifted in its sleep. Twilight felt her eyes widened as the large head began to make its way off the ground. Her eyes followed its head as it opened its mouth and let out a low, rumbling growl. As it seemed to yawn awake, it lowered its head and watched as its eyes opened, revealing the glossy black orbs underneath its eyelids. It was tilted a little, and then the dragon staring straight at her. There was a moment of silence that the two of them stared at each other. Twilight couldn't do so much as breathe while the dragon seemed curious of her presence. That was when she heard it, the low rumbling from the dragon's throat, a simple vibration that only meant one thing. The dragon opened its mouth, and she could already see the flame sticking out at the back of its throat, rushing forward to burn the ascender. Her body suddenly unfroze, adrenaline coursing through her veins. She had come too far just to let herself die now. Her legs had kicked in as she leaped, just barely avoiding the blazing flames that spewed out from where she had been standing. She could feel the roaring heat stinging her air and bone and tail as the heating back of her legs. She winced in pain, knowing the full well that if she stopped, she was dead. The loud groaning shaking the roar erupted for the town, nearly knocking her off of her balance. 
She stared ahead, running as fast as her legs could carry her, until she heard the loud flapping of wings. The dragon was taken off, and there was no doubt in her mind that it was going to be chasing after her. Where is City Hall? Where is it? Twilight cried out, breathing growing rage as she continued to run. She turned down another street, hoping to confuse the dragon about her whereabouts, but the sounds of heavy beating wings continued right behind her. Her head desperately looked left and right, trying to look for some sort of sign that if she was going the right way. The rushing of the building going by her didn't help. She didn't have time to stop and observe. Another ground-shaking roar bellowed right behind her, and she felt her skin crawl at the faucet of being burnt alive. She made another sharp turn down another street, wings unleashing the large gust as they passed by her. She knew that she wasn't going to get away from long. Where is it? Where is it? She braided herself for having gotten so lost. This was her way home. She knew it better than this. A stream of fire suddenly rained down from the sky in front of her, forcing her to skid to a halt. The inferno just a few feet away from her was melting the metal that made up the floor, causing it to drip and ooze down to the infinite abyss down below.